As fans ready for the new season, we prepared the Fox Sports Net free game checklist. First, dust off the hibachi. Pull out the pom-poms. Fly the team flags. Paint the banners. And your face. Whether it's barbecue, brats, or burgers, it's that time of year. College football is back. This was the scene here at Carter Findlay Stadium in Raleigh. Earlier today, the tailgaters were out in force. The barbecues were fired up. Everybody having a big party getting set for the game today. But about 15 minutes ago, we had a gully washer come through Carter Findlay. A major thunderstorm with the attendant lightning and thunder. And we have a delay at Carter Findlay Stadium in Raleigh. We'll be getting the latest from Mike Hogwood on the field, but the rain has subsided. There's more bad weather on the way, but we will have football. That's the good news. The BCA Bowl matches the Lobos of New Mexico against the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. And a very pleasant good day wherever you may be. This is Bob Rathman along with Eden Horton. Great to have you with us today. These two teams all excited, all pumped up, ready to go. But then Mother Nature stepped in and showed who's really the boss here. I know. I hope it stays away so we can get down to some football. And when we do, we'll see two outstanding quarterbacks. For the Wolfpack of North Carolina State, their junior quarterback, Phillip Rivers, is a record setter already in just two seasons. He's one of the best in the country. Bob, this guy is one of the most prolific passers in the history of the Atlantic Coast Conference. He's well on his way to major, major records. He's going to be, I think, one of the better quarterbacks in the league. He has a strange throwing style, but he hasn't been very productive. And the quarterback for the Lobos of New Mexico is Casey Kelly. And when they inserted Casey into the starting lineup last season, the Lobos turned their year around. Well, Casey Kelly was a former walk-on. Last year down the stretch, he was 5-2 and two as a starter in seven starts. This guy's a fighter. He moves the chains. He isn't very flashy, but he wins. But as big a story as the two quarterbacks and the two teams today, it will be the weather. The heat index before the thunderstorm was over 100. These teams are getting ruddy, but the weather, a big story. We'll go down to the field and Mike Hogwood and get the latest when we come back. A lightning delay at Carter Finley. And the kickoff has been pushed back about 50 minutes to 4.53 Eastern time. As we mentioned a moment ago, the weather is going to be a factor all day. The heat has, is not going to go away here in the next couple of hours. And Mike Hogwood is our man down on the field. Michael, you've got your work cut out for you today in some very difficult conditions. What is the latest down there from what you've heard from the referees? Uh, well, I'll tell you what. I just was talking to Gil Gelke a minute ago, Bob, and you're right. He is delayed making a decision until 4.53. They've announced to the crowd the kickoff 15 minutes. They are concerned about a thunderstorm that is in Siler City, which is a town about two counties over right now, and they're in contact with the weather service. At 4.53, the head referee is going to make another phone call to the weather service and he's going to decide then whether or not that we are going to play football at 453 or whether yet there's going to be another delay to let this next storm go through so now what we are in is a wait and see mode but you talk about the weather Bob it has been scorching hot yesterday a record 103 degrees here in Raleigh the heat index up well over 110 that was the story today before the rain came I want to call in the head trainer for NC State, Jamie Cole. Jamie, heat like this, you've been practicing the heat, but this has to be a concern for you and the health of this football team. Well, we've been preparing for this for the last three days. We've been making sure the players are staying well hydrated, make sure they're eating very well. Talking to the coaching staff before we even came out here today, we cut back our goals that we start off with. We took about 12 minutes out of our warm up just to stay out of the heat. At halftime, we're going to make sure these guys get a lot of fluids. We really push the Gatorade and the Gatorade products that we have, Gatorade bars for fuel for the second half. So we're, we're doing the things that we can do to prevent uh, heat-related problems. And you were telling me you, you made these guys start drinking early today in anticipation of this. Early today in the last three days. We want to just make sure they're well hydrated before even coming into the day. And you said, and food is important for them at halftime? We, we give them Gatorade bars, bagels. We have uh, bananas just so they have enough energy that, uh, to get them through the second half, as well as fluids. We punch the fluids all the time. 
All right, Jamie, thanks, and uh, let's hope we play football here in just a couple of minutes. Well, we are in a lightning weather delay. The official will make another decision in 15 minutes. Right now, though, get ready for you got to see this. We'll be back here live in Raleigh for New Mexico and NC State in just a few minutes. We'll see you then. football in Raleigh, North Carolina, the Black Coaches Association Classic, New Mexico and North Carolina State. But we've got a problem with the weather. We are in a rain delay hold. Well, it's not raining here in Raleigh, but there is another storm on the way. And referee Gil Gelbke just seconds ago has made a decision to hold this game yet further. He now is going to make another decision about when we will play at 5.15. 5.15 this afternoon, he will decide whether and what time that New Mexico and NC State will play. NC State just came out on the field a moment ago, but now the referees are shuffling them off into the Wolfpack locker room and will not allow them to come back out until 5.15. And at that time, a decision will be made when we will kick it off. Again, another storm expected through here about 15 minutes past the hour. We'll be back then with another update for New Mexico and NC State. Kickoff may go beyond 515. Is that not true? That's absolutely true, Bob. Indeed, it may go past 515. They're making that announcement to the crowd right now. The uh, referees are watching the radar in touch with the National Weather Service. Now, to expand on what Ethan said, you got to think about NC State. They had this elaborate entrance plan for this first game. That's their new new field house which is behind me and they had a bus from the old field house during the last rainstorm they bust around they actually on the field because they did not know that the game was further delayed so they had the smoke the cannons everything went off they came out of the field then the referees had to shuffle them off back into the locker room so now they're in there trying to get their energy back up and again we hope to play football in about half an hour we'll join you then here in Raleigh and welcome back, everybody. We're in Raleigh, North Carolina. Mike Hogwood down on the sidelines. We're hoping for some football in a few minutes between New Mexico and NC State. Our tour has dropped, as you can see, but look how high the humidity is and that heat index up to 99 degrees. It is steamy hot, and we're starting to few, feel a few drops of rain here, but we hope that this cell is going to quickly pass by us in about 10 minutes they will make a decision on whether or not they'll bring the teams out to play because we are expecting another big thunderstorm through here in just about 10 minutes i was talking to rocky long the head coach of new mexico just a moment ago he said his players were showing a lot of energy in that locker room he actually had to go in and tell them to quiet down and calm down a little bit didn't want them expending too much energy before this game actually started he wants them to relax a little bit and be ready to go and he hopes they're ready to go in about 10 minutes and we hope that storm will pass by us and we'll play some football here in Raleigh, New Mexico, and NC State. We welcome you back to Carter Fenley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina, the home of the Wolfpack of North Carolina. This is the BCA Bowl, and the Wolfpack today playing host to New Mexico. And as you can see in the background, the Lobos are coming onto the field, and we have our fingers crossed that we'll be able to kick this game off in just a few minutes. Bob Rathman, Ethan Horton, it is great to have you with us, and we will have football today. It's just a matter of when. We think it's coming up now in just a couple of minutes. For NC State, they kick off their season with a fire-tested quarterback, one of the best in the ACC and in the country, in Phillip Rivers. He's about to begin his junior year, and already, Ethan, he's begun to rewrite the NC State record book. Well, one of the most prolific passers in the ACC history. He's well on his way to breaking major records, and I think he's going to do the same thing today. He's, he has a leadership. He has everything. He has a poise. This guy's, I'm sure, is a bona fide quarterback in the National Football League. And the Lobos are about to begin their 13-game season. Casey Kelly came out as quarterback last year when he took over. The Lobos ended their year winning four of their lad. Hey, Casey Kelly came on. This kid was a walk-on. He's a fiery kid. He moves the chains. He wins. I think that's the most important thing about Casey Kelly, that he's a winner. All right, let's go down to the field. Mike Hogwood is our man down there. Michael, what's the latest? Well, I knew there was a reason I didn't become a weatherman. I'll tell you, this storm is skirted around us, it looks like. It's going to head to the south of us. It's overcast here, but you're right. We are going to kick it and play some football. i got to tell you, Gil Gelke, the head referee, has really done a magnanimous job of uh, running the show here over the last 45 minutes and keeping these players safe and in the locker room and out of harm's way as these thunderstorms have been around here. But 
As you see him checking his watch down, making his final notes, talking with the referees. He's ready to play some football, and so are we. Let's get this game going, Bob. Mike, that sounds like the best news I've heard all day. And these fans have been very patient. It's a very dangerous situation. And, of course, the fans in the stands aren't privy to all the weather information that we have in the booth. All they can go by is what the public address announcer tells them. And uh, they have been anticipating a 4.30 kickoff. They've been waiting now 45 minutes for football. And they'll get their wish as we get set for the Wolfpack and the Lobos of New Mexico. New Mexico won the toss, and they have deferred to the second half, so NC State will receive the opening kickoff here as we get ready for the BCA Bowl. For those of you who've kept up with this particular preseason game, you'll know that weather has been a big part of its history. Two years ago, Georgia Tech was playing the Hokies of Virginia Tech in Blacksburg, and that game, the teams were on the field. They were ready for the opening kickoff, and a bolt of lightning hit in the parking lot just outside the stadium and the game was postponed and we had some more bad weather here today but fortunately for our fans today we're going to be playing some football so the Wolfpack and New Mexico ready to go and Ethan Horton I know these players anticipating they chomping at the bit I'm sure in the locker room waiting to come back out no doubt about it I think they've maintained their focus also they're ready. This is the first game for both of these teams. They want to come out with a big spang, and I think they're going to have that type of play from both sides. Car Carter Finley Stadium is sold out for today's game. Fans took cover during the bad weather, but they're back and on their feet, ready as the new Wolfpack season begins. Greg Golden and Lamont Reed are the deep men for the Wolfpack. And Wes Zunker will be kicking off for New Mexico. So the BCA Bowl is ready in Raleigh. And kick. And it goes to Golden in the end zone. Greg to the 20. And of the 21, and that's where the Wolfpack will take over offensively. The quarterback of the Wolfpack is Phillip Rivers. He set an NC State record for completion percentage last year at 65%. The offensive line is back to protect him. Number 70, the left tackle, Chris Colmer, has his backside. Plenty of new faces join the tailback, Golden, who just returned the opening kick. Golden coming over, in fact, from defense to play tailback. That switch was made at the start of practice this fall. So Rivers has him set. And NC State first and 10 from their own 21. And it is going to be a fake and a pass deep. Wide open is Hicks and drops the ball. How about that for some razzle-dazzle from Chuck Amato right out of the gate? A halfback pass as Brian Peterson got the ball from Phillip Rivers, threw it to Sterling Hicks, and the only thing that went wrong was the drop pass at the end. Darren, this is Mike. I would like to add to Second and 10 from the 20. And a little more conventional way to run things here with Golden. He reverses his field, but the Lobos excellent against the run. That New Mexico defense in the top 20 the past two years in yards and number five in the nation against the rush. And these uh, three men up front, a big part of that. At linebacker, number 51, Charles Moss has become the vocal leader of Mumping there, and the Lobo back in there also with Walton. And the secondary loves to blitz. So with Rivers being a passing quarterback, that should be an interesting uh, aspect of this game today to see how much blitzing the Lobos will do and where it's going to come from. Phillip out of the shotgun. And here comes that blitz, and the pass is incomplete. And boy, relentless are the Lobos. You're going to see that all game long. Well, they can't allow Phillip Rivers to stand back there and just pass the football, Bob. They must put pressure on him. And that's what we saw in that particular defensive stand. So on fourth down, the Wolfpack will punt, and Austin Herbert is going to be the punter. Tony Frazier 
is back deep for New Mexico. Herbert handles it. And Frazier is going to let this one bounce. It was touched by one of the NC State players at the fix of New Mexico will get outstanding field goal percentage after the 33 yard punt. New Mexico's offense quarterback Casey Kelly. When he came out of high school he was a draft choice of the Colorado Rockies in baseball. They've got an offensive line that the basketball team would be proud of. The shortest of that grouping at 6 3 is the guard Claude Terrell. And they've got untested running backs Ethan but they do have outstanding wideouts number eight countered number 24 Manning are big league pass catchers. Farrell is the motion man and Kelly with the handoff and over the 50. Quincy Wright takes it to midfield. Speed is the byword for the NC State defense. Speed everywhere, including the four linemen. They will bring big pressure today. At middle linebacker, Thunder Dan Burnett. He should be an NCC player this year. And in free safety, number nine, Terrence Holt, one of the premier free safeties in college football, and an uncanny ability to block kicks. He's blocked nine in his NC State career. Second and four for the Lobos. Tony Frazier. Check that. Quincy Wright is the lone setback for New Mexico. And now some confusion. And the Lobos will take a timeout. And that stops it with 12.58 remaining here in this opening quarter. We should point out that this is a family affair today. The word Lobo is Spanish for wolf. So we have the wolf pack and the wolves <laughs> head to head. And you know family affairs can get a little feisty at times. Sometimes. You've been there. Uh, yes, I have. <laughs> I think we both have. <laughs> yes, you're right. Such a fun game today. New Mexico dealing with all this heat and humidity. Rocky Long, the 52-year-old fifth-year head coach, coaching his alma mater. Last year was just their fifth winning season since 1979, and they rallied to post that 6-5 and five record, winning four of their last five. Rocky's a Provo, Utah native and has a ball club that is picked in the lower levels of the Mountain West Conference. But as we saw Thursday night in Charlottesville, that is a most representative league led by Colorado State Brigham Young. And New Mexico figures to be in the mix. If they can get off to a good start this year, they've got a tough non-conference schedule in the opener today with the Wolfpack here in Raleigh. Second down and five after the New Mexico timeout to get and junior Casey Kelly with the signals for the Lobos. Kelly throwing it's complete but wrapped up right at the catch. It's NC State defense Ethan has a ton of speed. They do by Lamont Reed he's not full he jams the receiver comes back and makes the play. I mean that's a sure tackle. We have a number change for New Mexico. Adrian Bird was scheduled to wear 41. He's now wearing 21. He caught that last pass. Kelly out of the shotgun. Backside pressure gets rid of it. The catch is made by the tight end Penley, but it's well shy of a first down. So New Mexico on fourth down will punt it away. This should be interesting. New Mexico has a true freshman ready to punt. Tyler Goss won the job in training camp over Oklahoma State transfer Matt Goldstein. And deep for the Wolfpack, number two, Brian Peterson. Let's see how the young man does here. That's for sure Rocky is interested <laughs> to see also. High snap, he controls it and gets off an outstanding kick. You know, let this one bounce. It gets into Mexico bounce, but trickles into the end zone for the touchback. A 48 yard punt for Tyler Goss. Welcome to college football, Tyler.
A timeout in Raleigh. We'll be back. Back at Raleigh, no score, 11-22 in the first. Wolfpack with the football. Mike Hogwood is our man on the sidelines today, and a little razzle-dazzle from the Wolfpack on their first down play. Yeah, Bob, but that's no strange play to the Arsenal. I've seen it four times in the, over the last couple of years from Brian Peterson, who was an unbelievable quarterback at Clinton High School, led him to a state championship, and has a great arm as well as being a wide receiver. They will use that play from time to time, and they'll use it several more times this season. He's actually thrown for a touchdown before. Philip Rivers sets him down at the 21st and 10. Golden looking for a hole, gets a couple to the 22. Interesting position for the Wolfpack, and that is a tailback. Of the three men that should play today, Golden, T.A. McClendon, and Josh Brown, not one has carried the ball in a game before today. And that could be something that we'll have to watch because the Lobos are going to blitz. If these guys aren't familiar with certain defenses, bad things can happen with Phillip Rivers. Second and seven. Golden, a sophomore from Fort Lauderdale. Moyer is the fullback. Golden gets the kick. A nice hold fully to the 25. The Wolfpack are just trying to establish the line of scrimmage. I mean, they're in their own territory, and they don't want to risk a turnover, although it is third and five. So I look for Phil Rivers to put the ball into the air. Third and four. Rivers last year was sensational. 65% completion percentage for the junior from Athens, Alabama. Rivers is ready. Has time. Now look at what And did he get the first down? Yes, he stretched it right over the 30 at the last instant. He's a big kid, Ethan. 6'5", 236, hard to bring down. Oh, it was extra effort. I mean, he's not the most mobile quarterback. And I'm sure the Wolfpack fans, they don't really want him out there running the football anyway because of the offense. Two low balls fly with each other, but he falls forward for the first down. This NC State team seven and five a year ago. Four and four in the ACC. Rivers out of the shotgun sends three receivers wide to the right. Screen. Golden. And Golden, they blew the whistle. Golden broke away, but they had the linesman blew that one dead. And the gain is up to the 38-yard line. The statistics that Philip Rivers has put on the board in just two seasons are mind-boggling. And I think, Ethan, what's amazing about Philip is that he came in, took over as a starting quarterback, the first game of his freshman year, sensational, right from the start. I think it helped when he came here early just to learn the offense as a freshman. Entered NC State in January of his first year in school. Rivers dumps it to Hicks. And Sterling gets it to the 40, and that's all. It's going to be second down and, oh, maybe three yards. A third down, yes, right? Yes, it's about yes, three. Yes. But Terrell Golden, number three, he just sat on it, Bob. He followed the receiver Sterling across the field. Right now, this football team of the Wolfpack, they're just trying to figure out what this defense is going to do. They know they're going to blitz, but also they're trying to hit them with those short patterns and give the receivers a chance to run the football. Penalty flags. And this play blown dead at the line of scrimmage. Phillips, the son of a coach, and Mike Hogwood. The Philip Rivers story is well chronicled here in Raleigh. Let's get the call here. Oh, oh, Offsides on the defense. It's a five-yard penalty, results in a first down. 
But this Philip Rivers story is is an amazing one, is it not? Well, he really is. And you talk to Chuck Amato about Philip Rivers and says not only is he a great quarterback, but he is the most mature 20 year old he says I've ever seen. Um, he's married. He has a young child born in July and uh, very, very content with his life right now. Very sure of himself. Very unusual young man. And again, very mature for someone just 20 years old. Having a wife and a child at that age will mature you rather quickly. Rivers spins. Peterson, he's going to show off that arm again. A throw back to the opposite side is too long. And again, the receiver, the Golden, was wide open. Peterson just could not get him the football. The Golden sneaked out to the back side of the backfield. All the low balls defenders, they just reacted to the front side. Watch number two come across. See, there's a ball fake to 22. Number two drops back. It's a throwback, and nobody's responsible for the running back because everybody's watching the receiver. Second and 10 for the Wolfpack. Mike Hogwood mentioned Peterson is from Clinton, North Carolina. Perhaps the most notable man from that town, Terry Holland, former Virginia head basketball coach and athletic director. Right in front of the Wolfpack bench, Greg Golden made six, one start last year in his six game struggle the tackle. Greg Golden played in six games on the corner last year and started one, and that was the victory and talent over Florida State. But they asked because there was some questions about whether or not Contre Jackson would be eligible. So Chuck Amato, first day of practice, said, I need another tailback. And before he could get the words out of his mouth, Greg Gold says, I'll do it. <laughs> He's looking for playing time. <laughs> Contre, the motion man, blitz coming. Rivers has some time, now has to run. Philip Rivers over the 40 to the New Mexico 38 and a first down. 10 yard pickup. Smart play by Rivers. Everything breaks down. The middle opens up and he just takes it. Is it a question, Ethan, of picking up where the blitz is coming from? It is. And right now they're coming from the outside. So therefore, that's why nobody's in the middle of the field. Rivers pumped. Since he's been the state quarterback, they've never lost a non-conference game in regular season play. Play action, deep middle, incomplete. Boy, Brian Peterson is having a rough first quarter. Yes, he is. Two pass incompletions, drop touchdown pass. But this offense has started pretty much like they wanted. Open receivers. They've had miscues. I mean, the ball is there. He just takes his eye off of it. Second and ten. Now a flag comes. We have six minutes and gets left in our Good opening ball. quarter. Ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty remains second down. It's amazing to me, Ethan, and of course you played professionally, so you can have a feel for this, but college football is the only sport that I know of, even in college, where you don't have an exhibition game, a preseason game to work out some of the kinks. Your first game is for real. And it's in front of 50,000 with referees and pep bands and cheerleaders and everything else. And you would expect a lot of turnovers and and uh, misplays and penalties. Nice screen to Golden. And Greg out to the 30, 27 yard line. First down for the Wolfpack. 17 yard catch and run. Well, the best way to beat the blitz is you let the blitz come and you, then you fire a screen right behind because everybody on defense up the field. And that's why nobody's there for Greg Golden as he makes almost a fumble there, it looks like, but uh, they said the ball was down. First and 10 at the 27. Here is 
T.A. McClendon. And he's down to the 13-yard line on a 13-yard gain. This is the true freshman and his first collegiate carry from Albemarle, North Carolina. He just hits the corner. I mean, 178 career touchdowns in high school. Look at the strength. He just carries everybody. And I think this is a running back everyone has expected to be playing, Bob, anyway. 178 touchdowns in high school. You know what TA stands for? What's that? Touchdown any. <laughs> There's a movement. These are the kinds of mistakes you expect on an opening game. You're right, Bob, but you still have to practice. And you practice certain situations. You practice being down here inside the red zone where you can't make mistakes. And right now, the Wolfpack. They're killing themselves. Yeah, it's hard to practice the adrenaline rush, though. That's true. It's game day. I agree with that, Bob. Five-yard penalty moves it back, first and 15 from the 19. The 75, Bob, he's a senior. He's been here before. 11 plays, 61 yards so far. McClendon, nowhere to go on the corner. McClendon, 5'11", 214 pounds. The record in the state of North Carolina, belongs to T.A. 3,000 yards last year and over 9,000 rushing yards in his career. And he gets a taste of it, comes out of the game. Second down and 17. Rivers is the only man in the backfield. Double wideouts. Lobos showing blitz. Rivers throws it quickly, but wide of the intended receiver, Kachery. Well, he's looking at the receiver as to say run a two route, which would be an inside route, and just a mix up on that play. When you pass the ball a lot as a Wolfpack, I think that's what they're going to do today. You have to be on the same page with the receivers because these guys are blitzing, and you have to have the hot routes, and I think that's what he was looking for on that particular play. Hot route meaning you're going to read the defensive back quickly. Go, go opposite. <laughs> that's right. Everything's hot today. I'm Eat still index. sweating. <laughs> <laughs> Rivers to the end zone, wide open. Touchdown, Wolfpack. Ryan Peterson makes amends. Blew a couple of passes, dropped one in the end zone, hangs on to this 21-yard pass from Phillip Rivers. And the Wolfpack takes a 6-0 lead. Also, Bob, number 22, David Hill for Lobos. He falls down. I don't know if they were tangled or whatever, but Peterson comes back with a big play. For NC State, Austin Herbert will do the place kicking. Adam Kiker's back was acting up in practice the past couple of weeks, so Kiker sits today. Herbert adds the point, and NC State leads 7 0. See the end of that play, what Ethan was talking about, the receiver going down. But Peterson says, Give me six, finally. <laughs> NC State draws first blood, leading 7 0 over New Mexico. Coming up tonight at 8.30 Eastern Time, right here on Fox Sports Net, the Eddie Robinson Classic. As the Iowa State Cyclones look to upset the third-ranked Seminoles from Florida State. Coverage begins at 8 and 5.30 Pacific, right here on Fox Sports Net. Bob Rathman, Ethan Horton, Mike Hogwood back with you in Raleigh. Mr. Peterson getting the congratulations. You know he feels better about things. 21-yard touchdown pass. From Phillip Rivers, Rivers' 41st career touchdown pass. And this is the first game of his junior season. Will he be back? I think it's the question around here. For the Lobos, Manning, 24, Ratcliffe, 9. The deep man, Austin Herbert, Jr. from nearby Cary, North Carolina. Gets crowd amped up. Here's a kick. Manning. Lobos bring it out to the 27. 
First down for New Mexico when we come back to Carter Finley after this. We're back in Raleigh. This is the second down play, an incomplete pass. As we were away, now New Mexico has its second and ten. Casey Kelly at quarterback. And on the delay, here is Quincy Wright. Right over the 40 and a good run to the 44. A 16-yard pickup for the senior from Los Angeles. We talked about the tailback position. Ethan, New Mexico losing three key running backs from last year. And Quincy Wright getting the start today. He had 14 career carries, the only experience they've had at tailback for this game. Well, I think anytime you have 4-3-6 speed, Bob, they will find a place for you. <laughs> they will make room for you. <laughs> exactly. Nice run. First and 10 at the 44. And movement. Let's send it down to the field. Mike Hogwood, the uh, skies are darkening, my friend. Yeah, and you know, Bob, it's coming from right behind you and Ethan over the press box. There is another storm coming in. The question is, how strong is it going to be? They just made it to the attention of the referee, Gil Gelbke. He made the decision to keep on playing and not stop and to keep going because he wants to try to get as much of the game in, obviously, if, in case it does thunder and lightning. Uh, he's hoping it doesn't. We're hoping it doesn't, but we're keeping a strong eye out. There is a storm that is almost here. And, of course, the big key is the lightning. They'll play through the rain. But that lightning is dangerous stuff. First and five for New Mexico after the Wolfpack penalty. Quincy Wright stopped at the 50. Just a gain of a lonely yard for Wright. But they have second and four as New Mexico is trying to get things in gear offensively. NC State had that long drive. Ethan ate up a lot of the clock. New Mexico's offense hasn't been out there very long. No, they haven't, but they're trying to establish something on the ground themselves. Quincy Wright is trying to get that speed going for this offense. Second and two officially. Counter gets the handoff in motion, trips, and goes down. Dwight Counter, the wide receiver, was an honorable mention. All Mountain West a year ago led the team with 43 catches. They put the ball in his belly, but he got tangled up and fell down. Well, he got tripped up with Casey Kelly, and I'm not so sure that wasn't a pass because Kelly went out the backside as if he was going out for a pass. Taking one out of the Chuck Amato playbook. That's right. Third and long. And more flags. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty. It remains third down. Rocky Long, New Mexico's head coach, his ball club. Looking to establish that running game. We haven't really seen much in terms of passing of Casey Kelly today. He's faced now with an 11. The last penalty, the fifth of the game. Second against New Mexico to back it up. They had first and five, and now it's third and 11. A little sidearm throw goes through the hands of the tight end, Augustinian. Good coverage by the Wolfpack. And again, the closing speed on these pass routes is yeah. something I think we'll see New Mexico make adjustments on. Also, you have to look at this Wolfpack defense. They, are, they have gone up pretty much against their own offense, and it's pretty similar in terms of spreading out receivers, spreading backs. And I think that's something that's working to their advantage. Tyler Goss had an outstanding punt. His first time, a 48-yarder. The deep man for the Wolfpack is Brian Peterson. Pack coming, boy, they've got a pension for blocking kicks. This one's rolling, going to let it go, and it's going to roll inside the five. And touchdown. Tyler Goss 
pretty good average here. First two collegiate punts. That's a 54 yarder. The best damn sports show period's all-star summer continues. Join Chris Rose, Tom Arnold, and a bunch of XBIs for the only show that gives you sports comedy, commentary, scores, and highlights. Huge stars complete insanity. Weeknights at 8 p.m. and late night only on Fox Sportsnet. An absolute joy to have you with us today from Raleigh. Sorry for the delay. More bad weather on the way. We'll get Hogwood and Umbrella down on the field. You know the rule, Ethan. Broadcasters first, then women and children. Rivers hit, but he throws, but it's going to be complete. And out of bounds at the 40. A grab for the Wolf Cotchery. And boy, Rivers really held in there. He had no idea what was coming from behind. Number 93, Daniel Kegler. He's coming from behind, but Cotchery. He concentrates on the ball. He catches it at the highest point, and that's why he was able to come up with the completion. I mean, Rivers, he's concentrating on the receiver as he should. I mean, that's just standing in there and being tough. 37-yard gain. First and 10 for the Wolfpack at their own 41-yard line, and Rivers out of the gun. Peterson, the motion man. Rivers. Complete. Hicks. His forward progress marked at the 45. Moss and Crockett combining on the tackle for New Mexico. But Rivers is starting to get it cranked up. Well, they're protecting. New Mexico hasn't come back with any blitzes, but I expect him to. You can't let this kid stand back there and pick you apart because he's a pocket passer. A 14-yard gain. First and 10 at the Lobos 45. And Rivers hitting on 67% so far. Here comes that pressure. Rivers uncorks it. Down the middle, it's going to be incomplete. Big battle, no flags. Cotchery made that great catch a moment ago. Right in the middle and defending was David Hall, the safety man. And I'll tell you, that was pretty good one-on-one -on -one football right there. It was. There's a lot of contact. The officials are letting them play. I mean, there's a little contact beforehand. But the Lobos did come back with the blitz. And they will keep com and coming they better. and coming. <laughs> The handoff goes to Josh Brown. This is the third tailback we've seen today for the Wolfpack. Brown, a redshirt freshman out of Shelby. And any time an NC State athlete comes from Shelby, I look to see which Shelby High School he attended. And Josh Brown went to the magic Shelby High School, as far as state fans are concerned, Crest High School, <laughs> because that's the school that produced the great David Thompson, the greatest Hoop star in ACC history. Third down and 11. Rivers, pressure, and he's not going to go away this time. And a penalty flag. I think we've got a face mask. Charles Moss, the middle linebacker, was the man who broke through to make the sack. But there's a question of the penalty. Well, he timed it. I mean, he must know the snap count because he wasn't picked up on that blitz. So that cost them five, actually. It's going to give them the first down in field position, in terms of field position, because he would have lost 10 on the sack. But the biggie on this, of course, a personal foul gets an automatic first down. So that will move the football down to the 31-yard line. And NC State will deploy three receivers at the bottom of your screen. First quarter has come to an end. We had that lightning delay. It was worth the wait. College football is back on Fox Sports Net. We've had a whale of a game going. NC State of New Mexico. Phillip Rivers running it 
and throwing it for the Wolfpack. And at the end of one in Raleigh, it's NC State 7 and New Mexico nothing. At the end of one quarter here in Raleigh, it's NC State 7 and New Mexico nothing after our 30 second lightning delay. State's controlled the quarter. Big yards, and Rivers has done it path passing and running. Six of ten on the air for 98 yards. He's rushed it twice for 14. First down at 10. And the swing pass to Peterson. Tries to turn that corner. Out of bounds at the 27. Phillip Rivers came from Athens, Alabama High School. And this is some file footage from 1999. And at 6'5", you could tell he was hard to bring down back then. <laughs> he was. But I don't think he wants to run like that right now. And Rivers with the arm. He doesn't have the classic throwing motion. Uh, but you look at that completion percentage, he gets the ball where it needs to go, and he gets it there when it needs to be there. Hard to complain. Golden on the corner. Out of bounds at the 20. He has, Bob, his good field awareness. I mean, he sees the defenses. He knows the offense. And I think that's why he's been productive. And I'm like, you, I don't care how this kid throws the football as long as, long as he can get it to the right receiver. There's a lot of talk about Rivers when he goes to the NFL, whether they'll try to change his throwing motion or alter it in some way, because it kind of comes sidearm. But I, I agree with you, man. Show me the results. <laughs> That's what I care about. He wins. <laughs> and that's right. And hits the receivers with a high percentage. McClendon. Dancing that sideline. Penalty flag. Wind is picking up. And it's blowing left to right as you look at the gridiron. A Conference USA crew today, and a good one. Gil Gelke is the referee. Holding. I think it's holding. Against NC State. Holding on the offense. The 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul remains first down. So 30-yard line is the spot, and it will be first down and 20 for NC State. Rivers under pressure. Throws to the end zone. Incomplete. Peterson got knocked off his feet. Unable to hang on to it. Crockett delivered the blow. The cornerback, David Crockett, the senior from Gardenia, California, denying Peterson a second touchdown. Crockett saved this play. I mean, DeMar Black, he's off balance. Ball should have been caught right there. Here comes Crockett with the big hit. That's why the ball comes out. The Lobos have an injured player. Mike Hogwood, who is it? Well, it's here starting linebacker Shannon Kincaid. He sprained his knee, Bob. He's out for the game. Kincaid, a junior from Albuquerque, he is out. Billy Struther is in to back him up, number 17. Now we have a whistle, and the Wolfpack takes a timeout. We'll step aside with 14.05 remaining in quarter number two in Raleigh. BCA Bowl. Phillip Rivers in the Wolfpack, seven. New Mexico, nothing. Welcome back to Carter Finley Stadium, NC State, seven at New Mexico. There was a pass interference call on New Mexico. And so the Wolfpack is going to have a first and 10 at the 15. And we didn't see the flag, but you no. talked about the bump. And then we had the big hit by Crockett. But there was a flag thrown, so pass interference against the Lobos to give NC State this first and 10. Let's go down to the field and Mike Hogwood. Yeah, Rocky Long didn't see that play either. He just called the officials over and said, would you explain that to me, please? And the officials said, yeah, the defender pushed, pushed on the receiver, and that was the uh, interference. But uh, Rocky Long is not happy about that call. 
It's raining, Mike. Is it a problem out there? Not at all. It's just uh, spitting a little bit, Bob, and it uh, actually feels kind of good with the weather we've had today. How do you like holding that microphone with the lightning all around? Uh, the microphone's <laughs> going on the ground when the lightning hits, let me tell you. Here comes Philip Roberts. Golden. Loose football. Recovered by NC State. Joe Gray, the tight end, was jamming out of the spot. Well, you can tell Golden is not used to rushing the football because when you get into a crowd, you do not jump into the air. <laughs> I mean, you give yourself up, say, hit me, torpedo practice, here I am, stay on the ground. <laughs> Did you learn that lesson uh, the, the hard way? Yes. <laughs> Ethan Horton, one of the great all-time ACC running backs for the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Second down and eight. Ethan had over 3,000 yards rushing in his Carolina career. River is getting over the five and down to the three. Well, he's shown us something running the ball in this first half. He has, and as you stated, six foot five, he's a big, tall quarterback. And we saw a little bit of his high school footage, so this is nothing new to him. Little option play, catches the Lobos off guard with the short corner. Nobody's over there, he tucks it up. Just hard running. First and goal for the Wolfpack, and the ball is on the three yard line. Tight ends are tight. And it's going to be a pitch to Golden. Five sprints to the corner. Can't get there. Knocked off his feet by the safety. Terrell Golden. Well, Golden saved the touchdown. He fought off the block for one thing. He kept his feet. The Lobos just stretched this play out to Golden. You got Golden on Golden. <laughs> the Lobos Golden won that battle. Second down and goal at the one. Golden leaps, can't get there. Third down. Now he should have leaped on that play, but it just wasn't enough of a line surge to go over the top, but now 44, T.A. McClendon, Mr. Touchdown Maker in high school, he enters the game. Golden comes out. Fullback in the game is Moyer, 49. Rivers will push it into the end zone for the six. NC State goes up by two scores. Phillip Rivers having a big day running the football. Now 25 yards on four carries. And that last one, a yard's worth. Then it ends up in a touchdown for the Wolfpack. So Rivers is thrown for one, rushed for one. And Austin Herbert in to kick the PAT. Eleven, forty-one, second quarter. Ooh, and a big flash of lightning in the distance. Fourteen, nothing. NC State. A light rain, but what we're most concerned about is the lightning. Another cell moving through, and in the distance there, beyond the light standards is where there's some lightning activity. It's not right on top of the stadium, but it is, we can see it here from the press box. We had a pretty good blast of lightning right there, right before the uh, touchdown was scored. This September, get your NFL fix a day earlier with a pregame show that you've never seen before. Introducing the NFL show on Fox Sports Network. With Michael Irvin, Tony Siragusa, and comedian Tommy Davidson. Start your football weekend with the NFL show presented by the United States Postal Service, premiering Saturday, September 7th, on Fox Sports Net. Here's the NC State kick. No return by Tony Frazier. First and 10 for the Lobos out at the 20. Well, New Mexico's offense, Ethan Horton, has come in fits and starts in this first half. 
Now they're down two touchdowns. They need to get something started now. Because you don't want to give this offense to the Wolfpack any more chances without having any points on the board because they can score an awful lot. Only one first down today for Rocky Long's team. And another flash of lightning. More lightning as we wait for the snap count. Kelly gets the first down. He is out of bounds at the 31 and 11 yard pickup. LaShawn Price, number 56, he lost his containment. He went inside with a boot fake, and that allowed Casey to get back to the outside. And that's why he had so much room to work with. They'll officially mark the football at the 32. So 12-yard gain. You don't hear much of a reaction from the crowd. I think the people on this side of the stadium, the press box side of the stadium, are more concerned right now about the lightning, to be very honest with you. Here's the toss. And a big hit. Freddie Autry Lindsay, number 31, with the tackle. On Quincy Wright, knocked him out at the 35. Well, that time, Archie Lindsay stayed home. See the hit, he delivered the blow. The last time, everybody lost their containment. Under 11 minutes to go, second quarter. Play action. Kelly, nowhere to run. Third and long as we check in with meteorologist Mike Hogwood. No doubt about it, I feel like one of those today. But I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what, I was just talking to some of the game officials. They say that lightning that you're seeing is really over the city of Raleigh, which is getting pounded right now with high winds and lightning and a lot of rain. But it has somehow missed us. And Bob, you, you can't see it, but right behind you and Ethan is sky and sunshine. Oh, man. <laughs> and apparently it's headed our way. So let's hope it gets here soon. Third and ten for New Mexico. Kelly has time and complete. First down for New Mexico, and a nice catch by Boyd. That quiets the sellout crowd, a 19-yard gain, and the most imp impressive pass play that we've seen from Casey Kelly today. Well, Lamont Reed, number 28, had him locked up man-to-man, -man. and Boyd just got free on him in a crossing route coming across the field. First and 10. Kelly's two for five. In pass. And off. Nothing for Tony Frazier. And a quick hit by Terrence Martin, number 90. We talked about the speed, and, and it's the hallmark of this NC State defense. And Ethan, these linemen just are fast and quick. I mean, they, they blow off the line. They make some quick moves from big men. 6'3", 290 big for Terrence Martin. <laughs> but that's many <laughs> meals, I'll tell you. No. Agostiniak is the motion man. And protecting it is Frazier. Casey Kelly may have been a toss designed, but uh, when the heat came, he was ready to get rid of the football. <laughs> Not only that, Frazier had some running room. When the Lobos haven't gotten anything going, fence because they keep beating themselves, will it be by penalty? And here is just a fumble. See, out, look at the room he has. And that's another loss. This makes it third and 17 now, Bob. Lobos one of three on third downs to date. Kelly 
screen. Stumbling and falling out of bounds. He is right, and Quincy may have that gain negated. There's a penalty flag back at the 38. I think it's holding, Bob, because the Lobos wanted to set up some type of screen in the middle of the field. Personal foul on the offense. No. The hand to the face. Because the defenders of the Wolfpack, they all just stopped when they saw the screen. They really didn't rush the passer. Personal foul on the offense. That penalty is declined. It's fourth down. Brian Peterson will be eight to receive for the one <laughs> The Calvin McDonald 78, he gets a good block. But it's for a penalty. No gain. Brian Peterson is the deep man for the Tyler Goss punt. Back coming, couldn't get to that one. Peterson looking, makes the catch, and straddled the sideline. The Wolfpack will have it at their own 11 after a 38-yard punt. Next Saturday, it's a college football doubleheader on Fox Sports Net. First, a Big 12 showdown between Kansas and Iowa State. Then Mississippi State takes on 18th-ranked Oregon. It's all next Saturday. Right here, and it begins with the College Football Saturday kickoff show at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific, right here on Fox Sports Net. So, Phillip Rivers of the Wolfpack, first and 10 from their own 11. They have controlled this football game. Rivers wants to throw and goes to the sideline complete. In double coverage, a nice catch by Jericho Cotchery. 14 yards. Another first down for the Wolfpack. But Cotri saw the route as if he was going deep. You see, he breaks it off right there. And David Crockett just could not react quick enough to get up there for the pass. Phillip Rivers has rushed for three first downs today and a direct hand at both NC State touchdowns. Rivers rolling, quick flip, incomplete. That was intended for fullback Chance Moyer. Total yardage for Rivers is adding up. This was the touchdown to Peterson. And then from a yard away, took it in for six. 137 yards total offense for Rivers. Second and ten. McClendon. And T.A. gains a few. A freshman from Albemarle High School. They asked T.A. about the differences of playing high school football and college football, and he said, I think the first thing that I noticed was the play calling in the huddle. He said, I've never befer, before heard plays that were in paragraphs. <laughs> A little more complicated scheme up here. It's probably T.A. right, T.A. left in high school. <laughs> Third and six. Rivers from the shotgun. Hicks. Outstanding concentration. First down, Wolf back at the 39. Sterling Hicks, sophomore from Pompano Beach, Florida, gains 11. And he was up in the air, folks. Bob, you mentioned the concentration. I think that goes for both guys. I mean, he just whipped that one in there. Brandon Ratcliffe comes over. Desmar Black. Hicks had a drop to start the game. and. Makes amends with that uh, wonderful grab. 
Golden carries. This is Greg Golden out to the 40-yard line. Second down and nine. Charles Moss with another tackle, number 51 for New Mexico. Made 11 starts last year. 71 tackles, the most of any Lobo returnee. He was honorable mention all-conference last year, and he really anchors that linebacking core. And he's also one of the team captains, so you know he's going to be oh, leading by example. NC State with a whopping 189-51 advantage in total yards. McClendon looking to get to the outside, needs a block, gets it. Cuts the corner, and he's out of bounds at the Lobo 41. Eighteen yard gain. A star in the making. T.A. McClendon. When he gets good blocking at the point of attack, number 70, Chris Comar. Now everybody else just follows suit and he breaks the tackle. You see a little speed. This kid was absolutely unstoppable in high school. Tiny Albemarle High School, a 1A school here in North Carolina, set the national record with those 178 touchdowns, 71 touchdowns last year alone. You can't get that many touchdowns without a defense out there. I mean, you collapse first. I forgot about T.A. up the middle. I said right <laughs> left, up the middle, all over the field. I mean, he doesn't have to, even in high school, he doesn't have to worry about listening to plays. Just give his kid the football. Well, the rain has ended. There's still some nasty weather beyond the stadium, but as Mike Hogwood told you, out over downtown Raleigh, but the sun's coming back now. And the Wolfpack faced with a second and eight. Rivers ready. State picks up the blitz, screen to Golden. Initial hit was made by Parker. And then Golden knocked out of bounds. Under five to play, second quarter. It was hard to gauge what the emotions would be for Chuck Amato's Wolfpack and Rocky Long's Lobos with the weather delay that we had. But NC State, they've had a few penalties, but for the most part, they've been very confident, very mature. They have gone out and just really taken control of this football game. And Mexico's tried to mix it up with some blitzes, but Rivers has had all the answers. Now it goes down the sideline. It's complete to Peterson. They're going to give him the catch at the 12. What they've done, Bob, is just made big plays, and that I think that's what has given them the momentum and the confidence coming out. If you look at the Lobos, they haven't really established anything, so they have no confidence. But I, I thought Peterson stepped out of bounds. So he has it right there, and I watch his left foot. Oh, no, he, he got out. it in. He got it in. Nice play. I thought he stepped in the line, but that was a good call by the official. Nope. Peterson is having a big day. 49 yards on the two catches, one for touchdown. River is hit as he throws. Touchdown, Peterson! What a grab! That's what we're saying about Rivers. It doesn't look that pretty, but he gets the job done. Yes, the 14, Corey Brown in coverage. But Rivers just stays with it. He doesn't give up on the pass route because that play, I think, was designed to go to the left. Peterson, he just came across the field and found his quarterback. Austin Herbert to add the PAT. 21-0 NC State. A 12-pass play from Phillip Rivers to Byron Peterson. And the Wolfpack running away from the Lobos. It's 21-0. 21-0, NC State. 4.31 left before halftime. And NC State continues to dominate action. Well, Bob, they've had three scoring drives of 80 yards, 96 yards, and 89 yards. They're warming up their backup quarterback, Jay Davis. 
Tony Frazier and David Hall back deep for the Lobos. And it will be Frazier to return it. Up the middle, nicely done. Over the 25 to the 27-yard line. Well, the Lobos, they've had decent field position this entire first half. I mean, if you look at this thing, the Wolfpack, they're the ones that, you know, they've been starting in their hole, but they've been able to be productive. But these guys just can't get it together. But they need to get a drive going right here, Bob, because they're on the verge of getting blown out. Peterson matching last year's productivity. He now has nine career touch of Wolfpack. 419, second quarter. Fake of the belly. Quarterback keeps it. And Kelly at the 33 yard line. Six yard gain. Well, that's something to get you started. At least you're not going back the other way, which they have been just about every time they've gotten the football. And all they need is just a big play here, big play there, because that's what the offense of the Wolfpack they've done. Hit a big play, and we've seen a lot of drops. They've overcome a lot of adversity. Second and four. And the catch is made. Tony Frazier, a uh, right rather, right, Quincy, the senior from Los Angeles, making the grab for the Lobos. Pat Team. Thomas. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, Pat Thomas, he came with a lot of pressure, but he just couldn't get there. Last year, this New Mexico team averaged to just under 28 points a game. Nearly 400 yards a game in total offense. They're faced with a third and one here. And Kelly will take it straight ahead and get the first down. Casey Kelly is a junior from Portland, Oregon. When the Lobos have success with the passing game, at least based on last year's numbers, it was with the long ball. Five touchdown passes that Kelly threw last season were 35 yards or more. And I'm wondering, Ethan, if they can pull that off against NC State because the defense seems to have the speed advantage. <laughs> Kelly wants to throw. Pressure. And just throws it away and incomplete. Going back to the comment, Bob, with the speed and the wolf pack. In their secondary, they have guys that run 4-4, four, 4-3. Four, four, On the offensive side of the football, the Lobos, they have receivers that run 4-4, four, 4-3. Four, four, so it's not really a trade-off. So it's like, okay, if you want to go and run, let's go run. I will run with you. Nobody's out running anyone. So you have to just make some athletic plays to get separation, to get open to make that play. And how do you do that? Is it push it off? Quick hitter? Quick hitters, get up in there, you cheat a little bit. <laughs> Kelly gets away from one man, but can't get away from another. Anderson had him first, and then Martin finished him off. The left side of the screen, number 90, Martin, dives in. First of all, Anderson, 34. He gets into the backfield. Martin collapses the play. But when I say cheat, Bob, I mean you, you got to learn things from experience. It's not like you can go up there and just push off and deliberately push off, but that's a flag, a penalty. So you got to know how to maneuver out there. You got to be cool about it. There you go. <laughs> Kelly, quick toss. And a completed pass to Thomas. And he'll take it up to the 48-yard line. And you can see the adjustments they're making as they go along here in the passing game. Terrence Thomas, the junior from Albuquerque, making the catch and run that time. He's a former walk-on. But that quick stuff, get it in the hands of the receiver. They're not able to go vertically. They're not able to get that separation on a deep route. So everything has to be quick into the corners. And they've taken a page right out of the Wolfpack playbook because that's what they've done. It's fourth and one. I thought they were 
going to I, go for I it. I did too. I had that feeling. But this is by far their best drive of their combination of plays. There's only a minute to go in the period. Yeah, let's see if maybe they got a fake in order. Let's see. Now they're going to kick it. Flags on the play. There are penalty flags. Peterson lets it bounce. And it rolls to the 11. Penalty flag. Was thrown. So 49 seconds. Left before halftime. Illegal motion on the kicking team. State Illegal motion. motion. Coming on up the at halftime. First and ten. Wolfpack will have it. Well, the feature on the Bowden family, Tommy and Bobby. And relive a golden moment in NC State athletic history, the 83 championship. And a common bond with the University of New Mexico in that uh, particular year. And we'll hear from head coach Chuck Amato of the Wolfpack. It's all coming up at halftime. So now the Wolfpack with the big lead will get Jay Davis, the redshirt freshman, in at quarterback for a snap. McClendon running it straight ahead to the 13. We'll have one more play, and then halftime will be upon us. Well, Jay Davis is a freshman. He's going to come out here with 33, 32 seconds and counting and really throw any passes deep in their own territory. This is his debut. Central Catholic High in Clearwater. London will get one more carry. Runs into his own man. And to the 16. And that is it. Pretty impressive. First half of the Wolfpack. Rivers in midseason form. Two touchdown passes and a touchdown run. And at halftime at Carter Finley Stadium, State leads 21-0. Mike Hogwood is with Chuck Amato. Well, Chuck, 21-0, your first game. You can't be too unhappy about that. No, well. <laughs> No, but we got him in a game, and I guarantee you he'll tell the kids that over there. Uh, and we got to make plays. And our best defense is to sit on the sideline, and our offense probably had a whole lot of uh, time and possession. You have three tailbacks, and none of them really played that position before today. How do you feel about that position now? Very good. I told you yesterday. I told you yesterday. <laughs> you didn't believe me. You're not, hey, and you don't have a tie on. You look great. Hey, thanks, Coach. I appreciate that. <laughs> Chuck Amato, obviously in a great mood, headed to the locker room. And well, he should be. His team is up 21 to nothing. We'll be back with our halftime in just a moment. Hang with us. The BCA Bowl in Raleigh, North Carolina. We're at halftime, and it's all NC State right now, up 21 nothing over New Mexico here at the break. And isn't it great to see the sunshine out here again? Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Hogwood. Good to have you with us here at halftime. And when you talk about the reason 21 points for NC State, you go no further than the man under center, number 17, Phillip Rivers. What a first half he had. Two touchdown passes, both of them, to a former high school quarterback, Brian Peterson, who's made a pretty good wide receiver, although he was incomplete on two passes he attempted in that first half. But he did catch two touchdowns. Rivers also ran for one. 21 nothing is our score. And, yeah, they're a bunch of happy Wolfpack. And I think you have to be able to tell from that interview with Chuck Amato a moment ago, he is uh, pretty pleased with his team headed into the locker room. Well, this is the BCA Bowl game, and we're pleased to have two people representing the Black Coaches Association with us right now. First of all, James Lunsford, who is a board member. Hello, James. How are you? Enjoying yourself? Enjoying the game? Enjoying it a whole lot. All right. Now, what is the purpose and the mission of the BCA? Well, the mission of the BCA is the first to uh, deal with issues that deal with minorities, try to set up situations so we can develop career, and to work with the youth to make sure that they develop, hopefully become successful people in sports. All right. Deborah Russell is also here as the Director of Marketing Events and Programs. And what is uh, some of the things that the BCA does with this program? 
Well, one of the programs that we, uh, besides our football games, are our basketball games. And we have also a program that's called Achieving Coaching Excellence that help in the development and training for our coaches as part of our mission of the VCA. And part of the proceeds that go along with our, with the, with the proceeds that come along with our games goes to our scholarships. And Scott, we give away $50,000 scholarships a year, 10 scholarships to pro, for postgraduate careers in athletics. And we also give away, we're giving away two scholarships this year, uh, first time to NC State. Um, two undergraduate students here this year for $1,000 to, to scholarships. So all of these proceeds definitely go to um, scholarships for, and for the youth. Fantastic. We appreciate what you do for the BCA. Thanks for being here, and we look forward to a great second half. Thanks for being with us. All right, this is the bowl, and again, our score, 21. Oh, it's a beautiful, sunshiny late afternoon. We couldn't say that about an hour ago. This game was delayed by lightning and rain. We got a little wet, but the weather has cooled down, and you know what? It's gonna be a beautiful second half for football here. And as we look ahead to the season in the ACC, you always look ahead to that matchup between Florida State and Clemson, because it's so unique. There's Bobby Bowden's at Florida State, Tommy Bowden is at Clemson, father against son, very unique. But both guys, you can tell, are really related by blood. They have a lot of the same thoughts about football and about life, and our Paul Crane, had a chance this summer to sit down and talk with both. If we'd gone along, you know, with, 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 with the Florida State and at least three games we've played, winning, uh, then winning three of them, it, it, it increases where you need to win one pretty soon. You know, it's only fun for a while for me. After that, it lose some of his luster. That's about the only negative thing of Tom and I playing each other. You know, it's, it's enjoyable that we play Clemson and there's your son and your son-in-law on the other side. And, Tommy's mother and Tommy's brother and myself over on the other side and the other family is there and not sure which side they'd want to see win. But then the downside is one of us has to beat the other one. And what's it like for you during the games now that you've had three of these under your belt? Are you aware of who's on the other side during the game? As the game progresses, you forget immediately who it is. You don't even think about it. Then things will occur. Just like when I remember we played Tommy and he used to fake punt. Uh, on us and, and set up a big first down which drove a touchdown. I'm thinking that sorry rascal got me one, you know. And then of course last year he used another fake punt, scored a touchdown, they called it back. And I'm thinking, well that he put another one in on it, you know. The apple doesn't fall very far from the tree. No, no, the faking we learned off him. He's I kept all his napkins from dinners long ago and <laughs> all the fakes we still use them. At the end of each game, coaches always go to each other. What's that walk been like for you? A jog for you and a walk for Tommy? <laughs> no, it's not. It's still, he, he runs to his mother. <laughs> <laughs> she's your wife. She's not my mother. Until she cheers for me, I don't claim her. <laughs> What's been, other than just the winning and losing, the hardest part of all this? Oh, what's the hardest part for you? Losing. <laughs> well, you know, and like you say, in, in our, it's, ours is, our profession is pretty much black and white. It, it really does come down to wins and losses, period. And it'll happen. It'll happen a lot of times when least expected. But right now, we've got the upper hand. We've had it for, and he's not the only the upper hand on him. And we don't plan to let up. You know what I mean? It's not like, well, well, well we'll just let up. No, we don't do that either. When Tommy beats us, he let it be better. Tommy, do you find yourself discussing things like retirement more than you used to, or encouraging it, perhaps? I don't discuss it to his face, but I will bring it up behind his back. <laughs> No, I don't mention it while he's around. It's, it's just, when he's just not around. Just to recruit just when to he's recruit. not around. But no, you know, uh, you know, it, it's 72. You know, it, it, it's not going to be too much longer. But again, if his health still is good and recruiting, it doesn't seem to be a factor. Well, you know, Paul, uh, I honestly say this. I've been, this year will be my 50th year in college coaching. 72 years of age. I cannot remember one day of my life where I said, oh boy, next year I'm going to retire. Or in five years, oh boy, I'll retire. I never thought about it, never considered it, and don't care anything about it, you know? As long as my health is good, win games. Now, if I started losing game after game after game, then I'm, there's actually some young guy that take it over, you know? But I'm not geared for that. But as long as we win and I'm feeling good, I have no desire to retire. Wow. Thanks a lot, Paul, for interviewing two special guys in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Coming up, we're going to talk to three former Wolfpack basketball stars who've had their jerseys honored here this weekend and have been a lot to NC State. Hang with us.
North Carolina State leads New Mexico 21-0 at halftime. Well, this is a big football weekend. It's also a big basketball weekend. This is the weekend for the Jimmy V Classic, a weekend where a lot of friends of Coach Jim Valvano come back and honor the late coach and raise money for his foundation. And being honored are three of his former players, Sidney Lowe, Derek Wittenberg, and Thurl Bailey. They're all here at halftime. They've had their jerseys hung in the rafters in the ES. I'll start with you. What does it mean to you to have that number 35 hanging up there for all time? Uh, it feels great. You know, this is uh, this is a special, special moment for me. And, you know, it'll go down, obviously, as one of the, uh, the best things that ever happened to me athletically in my career. And Witt, I know they've replayed that tape. The 83 championship, the miracle shot. V looking for somebody to hug. Do you think about that play very much? I think about it all the time. Uh, people don't let forget it. It's been 20 years, and uh, I think people still can look back and say, hey, we, we remember that wolf pack. All right, now you two guys are both in coaching now and doing very well. Thurl Bailey, on the other hand, after a successful career, is now, a, I think you're a, a jazz singer? And everything else. I, yeah. I'm in the music. I'm doing the commentating for the Utah Jazz, so uh, I'm, we're all busy. Yeah, and you, you've cut a couple of CDs, I understand. I have. I've got two uh, CDs I cut, and I've got one on the way in September. What does this mean to you to come back for this weekend? And I know you see former teammates, and you talk about Coach Valvano and what he meant to your life, and uh, uh, this is a very special weekend every year. Well, that was a special time for all of us. I mean, we were young men, and we were coming into our own, and uh, we had to be a family to pull this whole thing off, and I think that uh, this weekend kind of exemplifies the fact that we, we will always have ties together, and uh, and that's along with the school, NC State. Derek, does the lessons that Coach Valvano taught you still hold true to you today? The dreams and the passions will always live with, with all of us with Coach Valvano, and we hope to continue that, that dream and passion about working in college, working with kids, and, and trying to motivate people. Do you carry some of that passion yourself into what you do as a coach? To, did Jim Valvano and what he did rub off on you and your coaching style some? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, I think his ability to make his players feel comfortable, his ability to try to understand his players as well as have his players understand him, that, that's a key thing in, in my profession is for you to try to understand your players and not just for them to understand you. For special men in the history of North Carolina State Athletics, their jerseys will be honored for all time. And guys, thanks for being here today. Have a good golf game tomorrow in the Jimmy V Classic. Bob and Ethan will talk about the first half in just a moment. 21 nothing our score. We are at halftime. Welcome back to Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh. 21 nothing NC State leads New Mexico here at halftime. We welcome you back upstairs. Bob Rathman and Ethan Horton. It was all NC State in that first half. Quarterback Phillip Rivers leading the way both on the ground and in the air. And when he went up top after a couple of misplays early in the quarter, Brian Peterson ended up with two very nice receptions for scores. He did, Bob. He tested his arm. That didn't work very well. He came back with the feet and the legs, and he came up with the touchdown. Some big plays. I mean, here he has a man wide open, and it's dropped. Sterling, he just can't get, but he comes back again. Oh, to the running back, Golden. And now it's time to go out and do it yourself because you have tried others, and you're showing them this is the way you get into the end zone. One touchdown for Peterson. And on this particular play, this play, see, is designed to the left. Bingo. He comes across. Great pass. Great play. Great execution. And that gives Peterson his two scores, nine now in his NC State career. And really, the Wolfpack defense completely throttled the New Mexico offense. Well, they haven't done anything on offense for New Mexico, but make mistakes, penalties, but defensively, the Wolfpack, they're getting after it. 21 nothing is our halftime score. The time of possession, a big factor. NC State really controlled the football, and it's reflected in the total yardage. 253 total yards for the Wolfpack as compared to just 72 for New Mexico. Now, and as you look at third downs, the Wolfpack, they're 6 of 7. New Mexico, they're 2 of 6, and I think that's the big difference in this ballgame. Third quarter, straight ahead here in Raleigh. Back of NC State leading New Mexico 21 nothing in the BCA Bowl. Down on the sidelines now, and uh, Rocky Long, New Mexico coach, what'd you tell your guys in the locker room? Oh, that we didn't play very well the first half. We're not doing much right. We're killing ourselves with penalties, and then uh, we're not making plays back in the back end on defense. We're playing really poor defense. Any adjustments? What do you have to do in the second half to get back in this thing? Well, I think we got a bunch of young guys out there that aren't concentrating in coverage, so we got to concentrate in coverage and make some plays on defense. 
to give our offense a chance to score some points. Offensively, anything you do need to do to be more successful? Oh, obviously. We've got to throw and catch it a little bit better. I, I thought we're running the ball okay, but when you get behind, you have to throw it a lot more. We throw it more here in the second half. Ah, yeah, we're going to try to get back in the game. All right. That's the word from Rocky Long, head coach of the Lobos. Back up to Bob. Something told me he wouldn't be real happy. <laughs> he shouldn't be. <laughs> Lobos are going to get the football, so he's got that to work with. They've been spending a lot of time talking about getting this offense on track and not to point the finger at Kelly by any means. It has been, uh, I think, the, the speed of NC State has given them more problems in throwing the deep ball than they had anticipated. But, Bob, you touched on something earlier in the first half. Get into your quick offense. Get the ball out there. They have receivers that can run after the catch. Let's see what they can do in, in terms of getting it into the open field. Make those cornerbacks and safeties come up and tackle because when it comes down just to running pass routes, you know, they're running right with them. Ready for the start of the third quarter. As Austin Herbert boots it away. Frazier and Hall deep. And it will be Frazier. 15-20. Wrestled down to the 25. A 23-yard return, Thomas, Pat Thomas with the tackle for the Wolfpack. Well, I think it's very important from a momentum standpoint that the Lobos come out here and get something done immediately. Yes, down 21 points, they better because the offense of the Wolfpack, they've been pretty productive here. Casey Kelly, six of nine, but Unable to really go long, a lot of short stuff and a lot of yards after the catch to get that uh, number up there. Here's Kelly on the toss. And Wright is knocked out at the 40. Quincy Wright with the carry to start this third quarter for the Lobos, senior from Los Angeles. Only 14 career carries. The only New Mexico back with tailback experience coming into the game. Great gain on first down here of 17 yards. First and 10 at the 42. This is a New Mexico team that has scored in 106 straight games. They have not been shut out since November of 92 against BYU. Throw back to the tight end. Keeping his balance is penalty and upended as he picks up another New Mexico first down. This is an area where the Lobos had hoped to improve, and that is throwing to their tight end. Last year, all of the New Mexico tight ends combined caught six passes for the entire season. Penley picks up 12 here. Well, and at 37, Avery Gibson. See right there, he's there to make the tackle, but he just can't hold on. Holt takes him down. Penley, nice grab. So the Lobos putting some yardage on their side of the ledger here to start this third quarter. Motion man is Manning. Here's Kelly. In Looks like Augustiniak counter both men intended to in the area but there was no separation no you saw two guys and running that's side the speed factor exactly we're about. get back to your quick stuff it will be second and ten marcus hudson number one on the corner 28 reed nine terrence holt 36 maddox some guys to look for and they are with these new mexico receivers stride for stride kelly throwing Nice grab at the 40-yard line. Dwight Counter led this ball club in passing in terms of receiving 43 catches a year ago, his first of this game. He's been playing nagging hamstring injury. But stretched out nicely to make that grab, and it'll be third down now for the Lobos at the NC State 40, third and four. But this is a big third down because they haven't done anything all day so far. And they need this just to continue the drive. And play action, sprint out, quick toss, and a first down for New Mexico at the 33. Jake Farrell, number five. 
senior out of Newberry Park, California, 6'4", 215. And that is his first catch of the day, just the tenth of his career. Gain of six, first and ten. Well, Andre Maddox, 36, was fooled on a boot fake, and actually, Kelly, he could have run for it. delay right back of the line of scrimmage Gibson with the tackle Avery Gibson the sophomore from Birmingham making his first career start today 6-2-2-36 there was too much hesitation I mean there was something there the offensive line had a little surge I like those sunglasses Ethan <laughs> little gum <laughs> he's chilling <laughs> yeah Chuck's playing with house money up 21 nothing second and eight <laughs> Kelly pulls it back down the sideline and incomplete there with the again you see the run the receiver and the defensive back stride for stride exactly Maddox didn't go for the ball fake I mean, they need to come up, they being the Lobos here, with some crossing routes or something, pick play, something to get some type of separation for the receivers, because as long as you're running stride for stride, you give Kelly no chance of completing the pass. Third and eight. Another big third down for the Lobos. Intercepted. Linesman got knocked down, and it's a pickoff for Hudson. The only question was, did he stay in bounds? It's a bad decision by Kelly. Sprint out to the right. Hudson's standing right there in front of the receiver, so he should have thrown the pass. See right there, Hudson breaks on it. First career interception for Marcus Hudson. Sophomore from Miami. See, Bob, they started with the quick stuff. They were moving the football. They got away from it, and now they're out on really an interception. So Phillip Rivers and the Wolfpack getting their hands on the football for the first time in the second half. Greg Golden has started to tail back one of three that's been featured by Chuck Amato. Golden picks up two. Greg Golden switched from cornerback to tailback. Of course, a gaping hole left in the tailback spot by the graduation of the great Ray Robinson. And that Contre Jackson, a senior who was expected on a tailback, was ruled ineligible at the end of summer school. Wolfpack had already started there two a days. So Amato put out the call, and Golden answered that call and earned the job as a starting quarterback. Busted play and Rivers. Take it down on a loss. Charles Moss, number 51, leading the way for the Lobos. Well, that was a bad snap by the center in the shotgun formation. Carter Family Stadium in Raleigh. The BCA Bowl. Bob Rathman, Ethan Horton, Mike Hogwood with you. NC State has not really been threatened in this game. Phillip Rivers threw that touchdown pass with about five minutes to go in the first quarter, and NC State has been in control. Rivers throws it into the ground. Couldn't get it to Peterson. And it will be fourth down for the pack. Well, he was trying to hit number five, Sterling Hicks, on a deep route. That time the coverage was there for the Lobos. Austin Herbert. Only the second punt of the game for NC State. That should tell you how it's going. Tony Frazier is back on the 25. Line drive taken by Frazier. 40, gang tackle. Look at all the red shirts around Frazier. 10.58 to go on the 39-yard punt. 21-0 Wolfpack.
After a long and distinguished career under Bobby Bowden at Florida State, Chuck Amato returned to his alma mater three years ago to take over this NC State program. We asked his quarterback, Phil Rivers, to talk about the head coach. The thing he tells me is if they're open, throw it to them. If they're not, don't. And I say, Coach, you know it's not that easy. But uh, he, uh, he's a great coach to play for, uh, great intensity, uh, really uh, makes us believe in what he's telling us, and, uh, and that's why we've had two successful years, and uh, that's why we're this close from being a championship team. And off to a good start in the first half this afternoon. He's got a like one for his football team. The Wolfpack on defense now as the Lobos come up. Casey Kelly at quarterback. And there's that quick pass to the tight end, Augustiniak. Knocked off his feet, loose ball. But uh, they say down on contact, an 11 yard pickup. You're looking at that pack offensive line there, and Scott Kustra, number 75, when they asked him about Chuck Amato, I thought he had one of the great responses. He said, Chuck was in the Godfather movies, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> and he talks with that raspy voice. Oh, he's a character, well, Chuck he's, Amato. He's taking his shades off. <laughs> I just love to hear him talk. <laughs> On the toss, Tony Frazier. And check it, Quincy Wright is knocked out of bounds. I mean, that play looked like it would go for at least another four or five yards. And Andre Max, 36, he just closed it up real quick. And he picked up six. It looks like I thought it was about to go for about ten. The Wolfpack defense, Stimings, Rocky Long in this New Mexico outfit today, and they're working without one of their key recruits, true freshman A.J. Davis. Big high school star at Northern Durham here. Broke his leg in training camp. He'll be out for the entire season. Fake to right. Kelly throws. Incomplete. Intended for Penley, the tight end. He had a little pressure, but I thought he could have settled himself, planted his feet, and hit the receiver. I mean, that was one of the few times he had two guys wide open and there weren't any red shirts around them. The five. This afternoon, New Mexico three of eight on third down conversions. Kelly on the option. Right, shy of the first down. Right at the sticks on the far side. We'll see where they mark it. Terrence Holt on the stop. I think they gave it to him. First down. The eagle eye of Ethan Horton. <laughs> well, we're way up here pretty high. <laughs> Ten minutes to go. Third quarter from Raleigh, 21-0 NC State. I mean, they're still can get a quick score here. They're right back in it, just down by 14. Kelly on the delay. Right hits the hole and takes it down to the Wolfpack 30. Mike Hogwood, A.J. Davis, was hoping to be on the field today. Instead, he's on crutches. Yeah, I just talked to him a moment ago. He said this is the hardest thing he's ever gone through to sit here and have to watch this game. He says it is killing him inside. But he had one great moment. He was on the crutches. He walked over the sideline, and the entire stand stood up and gave him a standing ovation. He said it sent chills down him when they did it. But uh, he's having a tough time. He wants to play, but next year, and he should be a great one. Wearing a great number at NC State. Corn Robinson's number three. Kelly busted play, but makes it yards to the 25. A.J. Davis was the subject of some recruiting controversy because he uh, declared for North Carolina. And then on the morning of signing day, changed his mind and said he was coming to NC State. And that didn't go over too well in Chapel Hill. In fact, Chuck Amato, when asked, 
what he did to get AJ to change his mind to come to NC State. Amato said, I serenaded him with Italian love songs. Sure. <laughs> and, he wanted, <laughs> and he came to Raleigh. That went over like a lead balloon in Chapel Hill. Timeout. Now that we have a timeout, let's just say I wasn't happy. <laughs> Eight thirty left in the third quarter. We'll take a timeout. NC State leading twenty-one nothing. We'll be back. Twenty-one nothing. NC State leads New Mexico. First and ten for the Lobos. An eight and a half to go in the third period. BCA Bowl. And we're ready for play. Kelly works out of the gun. Throw back. Nice catch. Boyd, he has had two outstanding receptions today on the sideline. This one for 23 yards. First and goal to Mexico at the two, and the Lobos come fighting back. He's working on number 44, J.J. Washington. He gets the separation because he sails the in route to the post, breaks back to the corner, he turns Washington around, balls there for the completion. Nice grab right in front of the North Carolina Highway Patrolman on the far side. Eighth play of the drive. Lobos looking to punch it in. Kelly to the one. I thought he was a little far to be trying to run a quarterback sneak. I mean, unless they were just trying to get a good line surge up the middle for a yard, but normally it's right on the yard stick, right there on the line for the quarterback sneak, at least go over the top. Let's see if Kelly calls his own number again. hit and denied. Yeah, that time the Lobos had the look with the fullback in the game, and I thought maybe he would might get the call or try to, you know, bust that hole open. But yeah. when you give the ball back so far. See, if you had a fullback, you see 45 filling that hole. And Antonio Burnett, that's where your fullback comes into play. He's not there. But because you don't have one, he has a nice open run at the running back. Full house back. Cody is the fullback. Right the tail and counters back there and goes in motion. Right. Walt is in untouched. Three yard gain and the Lobos are on the board for the first time. Quincy Wright's first career score. Big play for this offense. They haven't done anything all day, but to come up with points here is huge right before the end of the third quarter. Now, if they get this extra point conversion, they're down by 14 points. And the kick by Wes Sunker is good. Lobos with their first points of the new season. And back in the game in Raleigh, thanks to Quincy Wright and company. 27 now, NC State. New Mexico is on the board. NC State not happy about it. In particular, Terrence Holt, who is the defensive co-captain in, in the secondary. He is Torrey Holt's younger brother and has lived under that shadow his entire life. But he says, as brothers, they are as close as any two brothers could possibly be. Torrey Holt, of course, a wide receiver star now with the Rams, formerly here with the Wolfpack. Their mother passed away a couple of years ago, and last year, Torrey Holt and his brother presented a big scholarship for NC State Athletics in their mom's honor. But Torrey Holt and Terrence Holt are as close as brothers could be, and Terrence says his dream is to someday go up against his brother in the NFL. That day, Mike Hogwood is not very far away. And over Ender. And it will be taken by Lamont Reed. And Lamont 
up to the 28-yard line. Here's a NC State player injured. That's T.J. Williams at the 25. Interesting that we haven't really called Holt's name that often today, and I think a, it's the respect they have for him. They're not going to throw it his way. <laughs> no. But they couldn't get a deep ball, really, uh, in Holt's area with his speed. Well, the corners also, they've done their jobs. And when he's playing center field, I mean, he doesn't have to help anybody. And I think in a running game, the Lobos haven't done an awful lot, so he hasn't had to come up and play run support. So he's just having a, a good time out there until I guess it's time to block a kick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Coming up later tonight, 8.30 Eastern. Have the Eddie Robinson Classic for you. The Cyclones of Iowa State have the third-ranked Florida State Seminoles. That's 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific right here on Fox Sports Net. We'll be playing that one in Kansas City. 21-7, NC State. And movement draws a penalty flag. Play a stop, flag on the field. Now, unless Phillip Rivers has changed his snap count, the low bowler is jumping on that first hut, second hut. So I think they've, they've found something. That if he has changed it, it's a smart move by the quarterback because they are blitzing, and he was starting to blitz right there. Dead ball, delay of game on the off or defense, excuse me. Five-yard penalty, it remains first down. I don't know. If How do you have a delayed game <laughs> on the defense? I think he messed that one up. I'm not sure, but no, I've never heard. No, it's on the defense, but I don't know. I've never heard of delay a game. Delay game. No. And as we say, we play on. <laughs> First and five. Toss to Golden. Well, look at that offensive line getting out there, trying to hit the hole. Chris Colmer, number 70. 53 Paulson, 54 Locklear. They've done a good job in the running game and Rivers. Third quarter, 6.20 remaining. And the Lobo is putting that seven to make it a contest. It's a good offensive line. They allowed only 17 sacks in 11 regular season games last year. Second best in the ACC. Second and two, Golden gets away. Keeps those feet churning. Nice carry for the first down. Mike Hogwood, what's the latest on T.J. Williams? Bob, it's a shoulder injury, and this freshman from Tarboro, they were talking to us yesterday about how far he had come in preseason practice. He'd been playing great on special teams, but it looks like his day is done with a shoulder injury. Played at Hargrave after Tarboro. He is a true freshman at NC State and playing today, but you can tell there he's in a lot of pain. First and 10, Wolfpack. Another handoff. NC State content to keep it on the ground here with Greg Golden. Golden has carried it 13 times today. As he has taken over the starting tailback position. Lost a yard, so a 35-yard net day for Golden. But I think this is a position he's going to have to grow into, Bob. And you yes. touched on it. You can't practice with so many plays. And now it's game time. And I'm sure they want a little more speed back there. Second and long. Rivers with the quick toss. Coming in to get it is Kachuri for the 50. Jericho Kachuri. His third on the team in receptions last year. His third catch of this game worth seven yards. And some big games last year. Three touchdowns against the Tigers of Clemson. And that Maryland game, about at the very end, Godfrey had 11 catches, 123 yards. And they went to him on those key third down plays of that Maryland game. Speaking of third downs, it's third and four for the Wolfpack. Do a good job of picking up the blitz, but Rivers. Oh! at the five. Hicks with the grab. How did Phillip Rivers get rid of that one? He really reached into his bag of tricks. 
talk about being creative. And the Lobos do everything right and get burned. You're exactly right. They guard the receivers. They pressure the quarterback. They almost have him sacked. Sterling Hick, just, he just stays alive. See, he's looking, he's looking downfield. He's tackled. He's going down. And he just flips it. Almost Doug Flutie style. Sterling Hicks takes it down to the four-yard line, a 46-yard gain, and NC State will burn a timeout here, 4.14 to go in the third quarter. And, Bob, I've seen it before. That's why I said Doug Flutie. We played B.C. my senior year in college. Flutie had six touchdowns, and he did the exact same thing, just a little flick, and a touchdown. <laughs> so... He didn't have anyone hanging over him, though. He just kind of flicked it out there to look cute. But that's just a big, strong quarterback with desire and determination and saying to himself, I am not going down. And there's your guy, Chuck Amato. He's charting something down there. Listen, Chuck took his Wolfpack team down to Florida State and shocked the world with a victory at Dope Camp. It will take a national championship victory to overcome that that one uh, because of all the circumstances involved. Who it was, where it was. The game is over the Wolfpack, pulling off the upset in Tallahassee. And then personally to go across the field. Tremendous upset for NC State, the first ACC team to win at Florida State. Even after the timeout, confusion reigns. Penalty flag. Yeah. Well, he picks it up. And he counted, so he was trying to check out the substitution pattern. First and goal to four. That falling down flip by Rivers to Hicks turned into a 46-yard gain, the longest play of the game that is not in the NC State playbook either. <laughs> but Rivers made it happen. McClendon, is he in? No indication yet. The nose of that ball did not get to the goal line before his knee touched. But T.A. McClendon will have to wait and maybe one more play before he gets that first collegiate touchdown. I think he does receive this handoff. Last time he came in before his carry, Philip Weiris went in in the quarterback sneak. He was a decoy. This will be a touchdown for the Wolfpack. The quarterback, Philip Rivers, scores his second rushing touchdown of the game. Lobos retooled their line on the. Uh, the line surge on the red jerseys. Could not deny NC State. No, not on that play. Well, Rivers talking things over with offensive coordinator Marty Galbraith, trying for two, and that play goes awry. So the Wolfpack will settle for the six, and with 3.38 to go in the third, lead it again by 20, 27 to 7. But for this offense, it's just been a game of big plays. I mean, they've had some bad plays to go along with those, but the big ones, they've just overcome the bad ones. And most of the time, they've converted those plays into touchdowns, points. And that's why they lead by 20 right now. Phillip on the phone with the coaches. He's not calling home to check out the baby. No. <laughs> you wonder how much longer will he play? Well, that's still a contest. I think he'll be in there on the next series. Uh, regardless of uh, New Mexico's scoring. Chuck Amato has to be pleased just with the way NC State has controlled the game. Yeah, and I think he's pleased also. You mentioned penalties early. They haven't really had an awful lot, but they have had some. And in a game like this playing so early, you would think they would, penalty flags would be thrown all over the field. But it really has been a well-played game by both teams in terms of the penalties, and you know, they're keeping that clock running. Ratcliffe and Hall of the deep men for the Lobos. 
as Austin Herbert is ready to kick it away for NC State. Ratcliffe gets away from one man, and that's all. Gain over the 20 to the 23. And the Lobos will have a lot of real estate in front of them as they take over despite the 17-yard gain. The best damn sports show period's All-Star Summer continues. Join Chris Rose, Tom Arnold, and a bunch of ex-jocks for the only show that gives you sports comedy, commentary, scores, and highlights. Huge stars, complete insanity. Weeknights at 8 and late night only on Fox Sports Network. Lobos out of the gun with Kelly. And Casey fires to Farrell. Spins out. No gain on the play. Looked like he was trying to get away, but there is Mr. Holt waiting to see him make a play. And the lightning bolt, Terrence Holt, came up quickly. I think he heard you way up here. <laughs> I think he did. <laughs> and i got to get my name in the newspaper tomorrow. I've got to have a tackle. Kelly over the middle, and it's intercepted by the Wolfpack. Yes, Bob. <laughs> yeah, he heard me all right. <laughs> Terrence Holt with the pick. <laughs> Second interception for the Wolfpack today. When you talked about sitting in the middle of the field, he does, and he sees it all the way. He breaks on the receiver, and he takes it the other way. They tried a crossing route, but he stayed home. You sure you didn't have some type of uh, walkie-talkie or something down there? <laughs> Rivers. Penalty flags again. Another reverse. Peterson looking to throw. Can't. Take it down at the 22. Flags came early. The Wolfpack, they were trying to set up a reverse pass back to Phillip Rivers. There's no foul. No foul. There were seven men on the line of scrimmage. Downstairs to Mike Hockwood. That play had worked before in past history, and you will never believe who the intended receiver was supposed to be on that play. It was Phillip Rivers. He was laughing all the way back to the huddle, said he couldn't get, couldn't shake the defender. But Phillip Rivers was the target of Peterson on that play. You were right there, Mr. Horton. Well, thank you there, Mr. Rapper. Not that I had any <laughs> doubt. Here's a toss to McClendon. Can't cut the corner, brought down from behind. 99. For the uh, Lobos, Hamilton coming up to make that stop. NC State has had some long drives uh, today. 14 plays, 11, 10, and look at the yardage, 80, 96, 89. Seven for 71. They've got a third and nine here after the Holt interception. Third at the 20. Rivers escapes. Can he get it to the end zone? It's going to be intercepted by New Mexico. Coming up with the pick for the Lobos is Moss. And he loses the football. Read the low pack. Shane Riggs, the left guard, number 50, falls on it. And NC State gets it right back. And boy, if you're a New Mexico fan, you just can't believe what happened to your team. Brian Peterson. He knocks the ball out, and I think that's where Rivers was trying to go with this football. Keep your eye on number two. He's going to flash into the screen because he's, here he is right there. Watch him. That's what you're taught as a receiver and as a defensive back. You strip your hand in there, knock the ball out, even when you're coming from behind. I mean, he never gives up on the play because he was at least seven or eight yards deep in the end zone. And here he comes right here with the tomahawk chop, gets it out. And the linebackers, they're not used to carrying the football, so they have a problem trying to put the ball away. 
NC State first and 10 at the Lobos 24. McClendon. Nothing to the outside this time. 89 Spiegel puts McClendon in his catalog on that tackle. Final seconds of the third quarter, 27-7. We've raved about Terrence Holt. That was his first career interception. Wow, that's surprising. <laughs> Second and nine. London to the 21. London. Many feel like he'll be the starter before the season is over. Had some injuries in training camp, missed some practices and a scrimmage. Had a face mask that hit him in the right shoulder last week. A deep bruise. Said his shoulder pads were too small. They had to get him some bigger pads. <laughs> I think he'll get a few more carries here in the fourth quarter just to get him some work. As you stated, everybody wants him to be the guy. He'll grow into that role literally and figuratively. The Lobos get a touchdown. But NC State coming back with a big play of their own at the end of three in Raleigh. It's NC State 27, New Mexico 7. Back live, Rivers. Overthrows in the end zone. Bobby Bowden talking about the fact that he is tied with the Bear. Paul Bear Bryant for second on Division 1A win list. Bear and Bobby with 323. Joe Paterno at 327 and counting. Of course, the all-time leader is the great Eddie Robinson. And a twist of irony that Florida State would be in that game tonight in the Eddie Robinson Classic. Coach Robinson, 408 all-time wins. A 38-yard field goal attempt for Austin Herbert. And this one will sail wide to the right. So the score remains 27-7, and boy, the Lobos got to feel good about that. They had the interception, gave it right back, and NC State doesn't score. Just underway, fourth quarter from Rowland. We're coming back on horseback with you. The uh, field officials did not that last media timeout, so New Mexico's run a couple of plays. They had a beautiful pass to Joe Manning worth 16 yards that has taken the Lobos for a first down at their own 38-yard line. Counter in motion, has it, needs a block, gets it, and out of bounds. Good pick up to the 45, and a penalty flag. Been another extra, what, 15? We'll get the call here. Dead ball, personal foul on the defense. A late hit out of bounds. That's a 15 yard penalty. First down. And interesting here that Greg Golden is going to go both ways in this game. He's now in a court. The Wolfpack, you know, rotating. Those DBs tonight, Holt and Hudson have come up with interceptions, but Golden, who began the uh, camp as a cornerback, is going to play some back there on this series. Now the Lobos have it in Wolfpack territory at the 41. Kelly looking, throwing, and throws it away. They had a lot of pressure, but it tells me, Bob, if he's playing defense, I realize... The Wolfpack are up by 20. I don't know if that running back situation is stable because I wouldn't want my starting running back playing cornerback in a game that's pretty much out of hand, well, in terms of score. Now, they, the Lobos can come back and score and possibly make a game of it, but what if he goes down? Now, are you looking at T.A. McClendon as your only running back? Okay. Of course, there's a lot of folks, Ethan, that think he ought to be the starter anyway. Well, good Just point. Throw him right into the <laughs> I don't know if any of those people on the coaching staff Here's a throw, incomplete. 
That went through the hands of counter. Mike Hogwood has more on the golden story. Well, yeah, he's going to have to be available at tailback. Certainly they want T.A. McClendon to play, but the other tailback, Josh Brown, has sprained his knee. He's in the locker room right now getting his knee x-rayed. He's not going to be available for the rest of this game, so they are down to two tailbacks. Well, they're down really to one. Right. <laughs> if they're going to use golden on defense. Third and ten. Set up nicely. And right down the sideline, 20, and bumped out of bounds. No quitting these Lobos, folks. This is a tough bunch from Albuquerque. They gained 29, and they're not at all ready to surrender. No, they're not, but the corner on that play was number 22, Golden. So why not go at him? I mean, he hasn't really practiced because he's only been on offense. See, he reads the re receiver. He comes out, gets caught inside, and now a well, little hole, but now he still can't make the play. But at the point of attack, that play was set up very nicely by New Mexico. Yes, it Good was. Good looking screen. Yes. They back Augustiniak off the line. Kelly with a quick toss. And the grab by Brody. Takes it down to the five-yard line. Our game summary, we had a long delay because of bad weather that rolled through the capital city, a 37-minute lightning delay. And then Mr. Rivers took over, and Phillip with four tough two passing, two rushing. Peterson's caught the touchdown pass. But here come the Lobos. Behind their quarterback, Casey Kelly. Knocking on the door here, second. And the flip to the tight end. Penley takes it home. Ryan Penley scores. New Mexico with its second touchdown. And they're starting to get their confidence back. Yes, they are. Nice execution on the pass. But also going back on a previous play, as you mentioned. Great execution. When you go out there and we hit the quick stuff that we've seen so far, Bob, they've been very successful. Now they appear to be back in the game. Let's see if they'll stay with it. Wes Zunker is the place kicker. Out of Jake Farrell's hold. 27-14. So we've still got a ball game in Raleigh. 24 to play. Kelly to his tight end, Penley. 27-14, Wolfpack. This September, get your NFL fix a day earlier with a pregame show you've never seen before. And in addition to NFL, the NFL show on Fox Sports Net, we've got college football later tonight. Florida and Iowa State. That's coming along right after our game here. 27-14, NC State, 12-24 left. And the Lobos rejuvenated. They were completely stymied in that first half. Could get nothing going, but a different story here in the second half. Now they've got to hold the Wolf Pack and get the football back. Mr. Golden at the five. Offense, defense, special teams. And Golden taken down at the 16. Now let's see if Greg stays in the game. Looking as they make the changeover. Now he's going to come out. Spiegel downfield to make the tackle. You know, the offensive unit right in front of the bench. They hustle out onto the field. Chance Boyer will be the fullback and T.A. McClendon the tailback for Chuck Amato. Philip Rivers gives to McClendon. A gain of just three to the 20. New Mexico, Ethan, hasn't been able to come up with too many three and outs no. against the Wolfpack. If they could do that here, they are going to get outstanding field position. It will be huge. And not only that, I think they have found the game plan for the defense to finally throw the ball and get some positive yardage out of it. 
Rivers now out of the gun. And the pass is caught, but nowhere to run. Hicks made the reception, but Crockett was there not only to tackle him, but the ball out of his hands. He's a very good cornerback. Last year deflected 14 passes. Pass is ruled incomplete. Thank you, sir. So it will be third down and seven. And that's the best that play has been defended all day. I guess when you see it all day, <laughs> sooner or later you catch on. Now this might be the big defensive play New Mexico has needed. If they can stop him on third and seven and get the ball right back. Still 11 and a half to go. They got a great chance. But can they stop the golden arm of Rivers? No. Hicks with the catch. First down, Wolfpack. Philip Rivers finds a way to get it done. They went right back at David Crockett. <laughs> Said, okay, if you can defend that one, let's see if you can defend this one. Didn't have any success on the second one. Well, Rivers is amazing. He is. I mean, he has the poise, the patience that's needed. Definitely in a passing attack. First and 10 at the 31 for NC State. Inside handoff, McClendon. Cuts the corner. Down he goes. Another first down for the pack. Out to the 45. A 14-yard gain for T.A. McClendon and his coming out party. 12 carries now, 62 yards. This draw is set up very well with good block. And now it's just the speed and the vision to try to get outside as he does. Switches hands and takes a lick from Brandon Ratcliffe, number nine. The freshman in his first collegiate game. Boy, has he been impressive. Gets it again. Nothing doing this time. Here come the Lobos. The nose tackle. Avery's Josie in. One of the first men there. Dan Kegler also. Avery's Josie. Senior from Florida. Name is a Haitian extraction. And again, trying to get Rivers into second and long, third and long. It's second and ten. As the Wolfpack approaches midfield. McClendon just find a little gap. Shot it to the fifth. What he does is just lower his shoulders. He gets behind his pads and he hits the line of scrimmage running. A little winded right now. And maybe this is the reason Golden went a little defense because they knew they were coming back with 44. 44, Bob. DT. <laughs> <laughs> it's a famous number here at NC State. Rivers waiting, getting. Outside pressure, steps up and floats it open, man. Caught. And it is going to be a touchdown for the Wolfpack. Pottery takes it home, a 50-yard reception. And that might be the backbreaker for New Mexico. Number 17 has been the difference in this football game. I mean, another broken play. Hey, I thought he was just throwing it up to get rid of it. <laughs> I mean, he just kind of lofted it into the air, and Kachi runs right underneath it. Austin Herbert to kick the point. 33-14 NC State, nine and a half to go in the game. Nails it. A 20 point lead once again for the Wolfpack. Three wideouts. It's the man coming right down the middle. There he is, 82. Cotchery. His fourth catch of the game. And over 100 yards in receiving, 106. Stanley Wiley just loses his man in it. Six points. You got to finish the plays. Yeah. 
Rivers, 15 of 24, three touchdown passes. Gives him 44 in his career. One interception. And right when New Mexico needed a stop desperately to get it back, save some of the field, the Wolfpack takes it and they drive it 83 yards for their fifth long drive of this game. Rivers is just a junior, folks. This is his first game of his junior year. Look at these numbers. He's going to rewrite, forget the NC State record book, he's going right. to rewrite the ACC record book. And, Bob, he's accounted for five touchdowns because he also has two rushing touchdowns. So he's scored all of their points. Now the back ready to kick it off in the low bows. Down 20 and nine and a half to go. Making the running catches Ratcliffe. Again, the Lobos have the best of field position. Archery Lindsay, number 31, comes up with another big hit on the return. There's nine minutes left now. The Lobos can put together another drive. They still have a chance. But defensively, they'll have to come up with some big key stops. Casey Kelly. Works out of the shotgun on first down. Here comes the pressure, but pass complete to Boyd, and you can hear the helmets popping up here in the booth. Oh, my. They rejuvenated Wolfpack secondary. I mean, they were coming, led by 36 Andre Maddox. Can we credit 11 guys with the tackle? I mean, it's great if you're the Wolfpack. on the play, sets up second and 13. Deep ball. And it's gonna be. Is it intercepted? No, incomplete. Maddox defending. He stops the short pass, he stops the long pass. So that was one of the few times one of those Lobo receivers had separation. On, and really, Bob, as we stated before, that's really the first time they've tried to go deep. I mean, they were unsuccessful, but here's the separation we were talking about, and Max just comes up almost the great interception. The intended receiver was Dwight Counter. He's got terrific, but that long ball has been taken away from Kelly and the Lobos. Kelly dumps it to right. Barely back to the original line of scrimmage. Wolfpack fans sold out Carter Finley today for the game with a standing ovation for the defense. And Peterson is the deep man here for the pack. Tyler Goss. Timeout. New Mexico. And it comes with 7.49 remaining in the game. A timeout at Carter Finley. Rocky Long and those have a long way to go to get back in this one. New Mexico had to call that timeout. They did not have enough men on the field. So now on fourth down they've got their punter in the game but NC State looked like they were going to bring some heat now they let it go and Peterson is not going to advance the return in fact it's minus three after a 42 yard punt right downfield to make the tackle 738 remaining and NC State with the big lead, Rivers is out, and redshirt freshman Jay Davis is in at quarterback. NC State has also put a new tailback in the game. 
And that is Patrick Lowry. Dead ball. Substitution foul on the defense. Lined up with 12 men. Five yards down. Here is the new running back. And let's up it down to Mike Hodgwood. The year for NC State is what would happen if something happens to Phillip Rivers. They had no experience at backup quarterback. Jay Davis in the game now, the redshirt freshman. Olin Hannum had that position a year ago, the rodeo guy from, uh, and he was a senior. Totally different quarterback than Jay Davis, who has a strong, strong arm and has really had a pretty good preseason camp. London. Now to the 37 yard line. Well, we've talked a lot about uh, McClendon. Ethan Horton, you were a former great running back for the Tar Heels. You like what you see out of this young man? I do. I think he's shown some flash, speed, strength. I haven't seen him really catch the ball out of the backfield, but I guess that'll come. But right now, in terms of just running the football, he's a total package. And he seems like he's got that the body for it. Too. He does. He's going to get bigger and stronger. He runs low to the ground behind his pads. Davis. Short. Incomplete. You know, when Ethan Horton talks about tailbacks, I mean, the man knows what he's talking about. Here he is. Not well for the Tar Heels. This is against NC State. That was here at uh, Carter Finley and then over at Chapel Hill at Keenan Stadium. Look at that blinding speed. <laughs> Too bad I still I don't have it anymore. <laughs> NC State covers the punt. But boy, he was one of the all-time greats in this league. Thanks, over 3,000 yards rushing and a a uh, gentleman to boot. 29 yard punt, six minutes to go, fourth quarter, 34 14. So the Lobos uh, back in desperation mode offensively. Down 20. Kelly rolling and gets it out of bounds with 36 yard line. At the 36 yard line. The first weekend of college football underway, the 2002 AP poll. Miami, Oklahoma, you'll see Florida State next, Texas and Tennessee. And I believe your national champion is going to come out of that group. I have to agree with you solid football programs. This pass zips beyond Boyd's reach. Nearly intercepted by the Golden. Said, oh man, that was six. <laughs> I'd have seen it. You're right. But he's back in the game. This is, this is strange to me. Third and seven. There's the Seminole game coming up. 8.30 Eastern Time, 5.30 Pacific from KC, the Eddie Robinson Classic with Florida State against Iowa State. On third and seven, the catch is made, tackle is missed, and a first down is uh, denied. 
New Mexico on the reception. It will be fourth down. And the Lobos are going to punt. Well, Rocky Long doesn't look happy over there, and he shouldn't be. No, he's had a no pun intended. He's had a day. That first half, his worst fears were realized. You're right. For his offensive unit. Yes. They did absolutely nothing. Well, they're having trouble just getting the right guys in the game. This another the eleventh man comes sprinting on. He's off sides. Cotchery is deep. Let him return one. He's going to call for a fair catch and make it at the 29. 32 yard punt. 448. 449 to be exact. Remaining in the fourth quarter. 34 14. This game's that grambling, in fact. And, uh, boy, what a great man. So many of his players. Look at this uh, running play for NC State. Coached for so long, and so many men that came through that program, who of course had distinguished careers in the NFL, but in business, and in uh, various walks of life, so many would never make a career move until they spoke with Eddie Robinson. That's respect, knowledge, wisdom. <laughs> the guy's done it all. What can you say? Should I take this job with? <laughs> XYZ widgets coach or should I stay? <laughs> McClendon is the tailback. Loose football. Lobos have it. And New Mexico gets a break. NC State losing the football here. 350. Nine remaining in the game. Let's see what happened. A bad exchange. Looks like the right guard knocked it out with his left hand. Couldn't and quite see his number. DJ Renteria is the man who recovered the fumble. I know you're taught to fall on it, but that was one I think I would have tried to pick up and score. Lobos need a quick six. Farrell the motion man. Kelly fakes. Kelly throws down the sideline to Farrell incomplete. And again, not a lot of room to work with. The, that was defending was Julius Patterson. He was neck and neck with Farrell. Plus you had the dimension of the sideline coming into play. The corners of the Wolfpack, they've done an outstanding job of getting up there and challenging the receivers. And not only have they challenged them, they have also run with them after they've gotten away from the line of scrimmage. Second and 10, 3.54 to play. Coming up, Southern Sports tonight. Special edition, and then we'll lead you right into football. Another flag. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty, remain second down. Seven penalties for Rocky Lopes. That is a trend that has continued from the first half. Tough catch, and that's incomplete. That ball was just inches off the turf, and Kelly didn't give his back much of a chance to catch that one. Well, they were trying to come back with that little screen, but the Wolfback defenders did not pursue the quarterback. They just stayed along the line of scrimmage. Nose tackle, Ricky Fowler, ACC academic honor roll player. 91 is true freshman Manny Lawson getting in. Allen Holloway. Go transfers in 94. There's been no drop off first team, second team of the defense, particularly the corners. Kelly. Tipped, incomplete. Intended for six Thomas. Well, he was wide open. That was one I'm pretty sure Kelly wants back. But Manny Lawson, a linebacker or defensive end. Now he's trying to guard 
4-3 guy, that was a separation, but you look at the position, a linebacker versus a corner. If I'm New Mexico right now, they haven't beaten a ranked team on the road since 1975, and I th don't think it's going to happen today. You go after number 22, Greg Golden, because he's been practicing on the offensive side. They're going forward on fourth and 15. They have to. Kelly throws another tip ball, another incompleted pass, and the Wolf Pack will get it back. And that might very well do it for the Lobos. Mike Hogwood. Well, Bob and Ethan, the print media located uh, one level above you guys has just voted on the most valuable player of the game. And he guesses as to who it might be. First two don't count. First two don't count. <laughs> it is number 17, Mr. Phillip Rivers, and I think well-deserved MVP of this BCA Bowl game tonight. I guess so, and uh, we've marveled Mike at his passing the past couple of seasons in the ACC, but he was able to run the ball today, and uh, what an added dimension that would be. Rivers doesn't have that kind of reputation. No. McClendon can't get free back to the 29. Rivers passing. 15 of 24, three touchdowns. He ran it six times, 29, and two scores. So a hand in five NC State touchdowns. And all five scores tonight were long drives. 96, 89, 83, 80, 71 yards. And big plays, of course. Davis. London over the 35 to the 37. While we've got Mike Hogwood available, we made such a, uh, a big deal about the weather, and it was a huge factor. But now that nightfall has come to Raleigh, and after that shower, I've got to believe now it's as comfortable as it's been in several days here in the Triangle. Bob, it's incredibly comfortable down here, and you look at the weather forecast, the high is supposed to be in the mid-70s here in a couple of days. And uh, this is a beautiful night for football, and what a great way to start the season uh, for NC State at home here and with the new facilities being built. A lot of enthusiasm for football around Wolfpack country. And it's all changed since Mr. Amato arrived on the scene three years ago. He has brought a great spirit to the Wolfpack football program. And when you pick up recruits like T.A. McClendon, that makes the coach look really good. He's done an outstanding job of going out and getting great athletes in high school and making them a part of his offense, his defense as well. A.J. Davis has gone down. Now you see number 44 and look at this beautiful building. I mean, everybody needs to upgrade if you want to go out there and get those top recruits and NC State, they've definitely done that. They closed this end of Carter Finley and erected the beautiful football offices that the pack will move into in January. Play clock's down to three. Davis. Can't get the snap off, but nobody saw the clock. Now they do. And the delay will back it up fine. A minute 33 to play. Dead ball, delay of game on the offense. Five yard penalty remains first down. We do want to set the record straight on Terrence Holt. He had that interception earlier in the second half. He said, and we believed what we were told that was his first career interception, but now they've amended that. It's his third career pick. I don't want Terrence mad at us. We've got a long season ahead. Well, you were the one to, <laughs> to get him jump started. That's right. I will take credit for that. Okay. <laughs> 122 left. NC State. Will stay at home to play their next game. They'll be here next weekend hosting East Tennessee State at Carter Finley, then play at Navy. Home to Wake Forest at Texas. 127, Tech. please. 127. And it's a, you know, with accepting your ACC games, which are always a tough contest, it's a pretty soft schedule to get them through September. They've got a good, they could beat Wake here. They've got a good chance to start maybe 5 6 and 0. London will sleep well tonight. <laughs> yes, he will. 
We will have the Southern Sports tonight for those of you watching in the Southeast. And the Eddie Robinson Classic. FSU and Iowa State. That's coming up at the bottom of the hour. New Mexico will play at home next weekend. They'll be hosting Weber State at 6.05 in Albuquerque. And then in September, they go to Air Force, host Baylor, play at New Mexico State, and host Texas Tech in a Friday night game on September 27th. Davis takes a knee, and that will play the game. The BCA Bowl is history. Chuck Amato and the Wolfpack of NC State win the first game 34 to 14 as time will run out here. Players shake hands. Rocky Long and the Lobos will head back to New Mexico. And a week to get ready for Weber State. We'll come back and wrap things up from Raleigh right after this. Pack of North Carolina State defeat New Mexico 34-14 to win the BCA Bowl. Phillip Rivers is the big star with the three touchdown passes, two touchdowns on the ground, five total, and an impressive debut for 44, T.A. McClendon, the heralded freshman from Albemarle, North Carolina. Mr. Rivers for 276 yards today, and he was the MVP. So for Mike Hogwood and Ethan Horton, this is Bob Rathman saying so long from Carter-Finley Stadium in Raleigh as NC State defeats New Mexico 34 to 14. Our coverage of college football continues at the bottom of the hour, third-ranked Florida State and Iowa State in the Eddie Robinson Classic. And coming up next, for those of you watching in the Southeast, Southern Sports Tonight. Great job, everybody, and it was in some trying conditions and the lightning and the rain, but it was NC State's day, and they win it by 20. You've been watching the BCA Bowl on Fox Sports Net, your regional home for college football.